the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, I want to be able to talk to you today and remind you that you're supposed to love one another. And because I think if we're going to move forward, based on the political condition and the condition of environments we see here, we are getting to the point where people are even talking about having civil wars. Now, I know they, they really don't want a war because unless they think that it's all going to be a one-sided war, which I think that's what most of them think. When, when people start dying in blood and guts and everything else start coming out, I guarantee you, you'll find all of you say, peace, peace, peace. No matter what the war. But we sit there and, and, and talk the talk and talk that junk. And, 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 and what I'm concerned about is the body of Christ. Your responsibility is to love one another. And, and I know we're gonna, I'm going to talk a little bit about what love is because I think a lot of cases when we hear about love, we have butchered it up so bad that most people don't even know what love is. And you ask yourself, if you listen to this video, what is love? When I say the word love, what do you hear? Oh, excuse me. What do you see? What do you see when the word love is presented to you? Because I think that is one of the problems when I'm confronting right now the people, the body of Christ. Because we're supposed to be the light of the world and we need to let people know who we are. Now here's a scripture here, because it's not a suggestion. I'm not giving you a suggestion. I'm giving you what the word says because you're supposed to be obedient to the word. You're supposed to say that you confess that Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, that Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. It doesn't matter whether you're white, red, black, black, or whatever. You're supposed to follow the law, the commandments of Christ. Amen? Now, look at the commandment here. Here it says, new commandment. This is in John 13, 31. It says, therefore, when he was going out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also purify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot uh, come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also, that you also love one another. By this, by this, by this, shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Now, that's Christ's commandment. That's not a suggestion. Are you all relating to what I'm coming from? Everybody in here relate to what I'm coming from. Do you, do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? It is not a suggestion. It is a new commandment by your Lord and Savior that you profess as Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior. He's my Lord and Savior. I heard his commandment. I read his commandment. You read his commandment. You heard his commandment. So what is your excuse for you? as a person in the body of Christ wanted to go to have a civil war. Where is it in you being in the body of Christ that you're supposed to be a racist? I don't care whether you're black or white. Where is it in the body of Christ where you're supposed to hurt somebody? Where is it with you? I, I forget the world. The world does, but it's, it's me no surprise what the world does. I'm talking about you. Hey, police officer, I'm talking about you. Where is it that told you you're supposed to sit there and shoot somebody six or seven or 20 times? Where? Where is it that you were called and, and, and with the sign that says protect and serve, and then you sit there and racial profile, profile somebody? Where? 
Where is it in you? Where is it he tell you to plant false evidence on people? Where is he tell you to beat the heck out of somebody? Where? Where? I'm trying to say that you are saying you are part of the body of Christ, and I'm trying to tell you what it what the commandment I just read to you. What does that commandment say? Where is what part of it you didn't understand when we read that thou shall love one another? Where is the confusion of that, right? Where the confusion is where you sit there and say, I I, I, I I'm trying to I'm trying to obey what I was you know, what my daddy taught me. Well, you know what? If your daddy taught you to hate and your daddy died in hate, guess what? It's a good chance based on the scriptures, it says that he who hates is a murderer, and a murderer has no eternal life provided in him, and he is probably where you don't want to go when you die. Now, you can sit there, but that's what the scripture says. That's not my, that is not my opinion. That is what the word says. The word says he who hates is a murderer and has no eternal life. The word says for you as a person in the body of Christ, whether you're a police officer, whether you're a Christian sitting in the pew, whether you're a pastor sitting on that pulpit, the word says you're supposed to love one another. And the word says it ain't got to tell you, typical politics tells you to sit there and do something to somebody because they're a Democrat or they're a Republican. But the word says to love one another. See, it doesn't matter. See, therefore, unless you want to put being a Democrat or put being a Republican over Christ, over the word of God, if that's what you're saying, if you're saying that a man could, if you sit there and say a man is ordained by God, so you listen to what that man said, and what the man says contrary to what the word says, uh, you're going to answer to God. I'm telling you, every last one of us who listen to this right now, one day you will stand before God, period. And when you stand before Him, you can't lie to him. So what you going to say? What will be your what will be your excuse? I didn't. I need to know. When we talk about the fact that he told you to love one another, what will be your excuse when you don't? What you going to tell him? What are you going to tell Christ when you meet Christ? What are you going to tell God when you meet God? Did you hate people because of political affiliation? That you hated people because your mama told you. You hated people because your daddy told you. And then even though you heard the word, the word told you you weren't supposed to do that. What are you going to tell them? What's going to be your excuse? It won't be any. So what I'm trying to tell you is, let's listen what the word says. And allow the word to be what dictates what we're supposed to do in our life. We're supposed to love one another. That's what I said. That's the commandment he gave us. And to tell you the truth, that's the other one. Just in case some of you live by the law, you don't want to live by Christ's commandment, let's go by the Ten Commandments. And, and it was wrapped up in here. It was in Matthew uh, 22, 34. And when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. So when you sit there and you want to be, uh, you want to say based on that, or based on the fact that what well, the law said that such and such is an abomination, so therefore I'm going to put that abomination down. The law said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And those of you professing to be Christians, well, if you go by the story of the grace of the, of the Samaritans, there was a priest that walked past a man that was left for dead. There was a Levite that walked past a man that was left for dead. There was a Samaritan that they also called an abomination that they also don't want anything to do with. But that person, at least 
saw the man, helped the man, took care of the man, put him in a hand so somebody can help him recover. And, and then Jesus said, as he asked the lawyer, who, which man, which one of them was his name? Was it a priest that served God? Was it a Levite? The man really gave, could only get one answer, the man who showed mercy. So therefore, just because somebody else, just because you see somebody as an abomination, and you and you definitely is a trip when you sit there and you see something you consider an abomination, but then you sit there and see somebody has committed adultery, but you don't call that abomination, and you also think that that's okay. I guess you're endorsing that, right? You worry about endorsing something. You got to endorse. Where's your endorsement of loving that name? Where's your endorsement of loving one another? That's what you need to worry about. That's what you need to focus on because that's what the body of Christ is all about. You are supposed to love one another. Love your neighbor as that self. And that love, just in case you didn't understand what love is, love is act of kindness. That Samaritan didn't know that man. That Samaritan didn't have no barbecue with that man. That Samaritan didn't go to football games with that man. That Samaritan never knew that man. But that Samaritan saw that man in need and helped him out. He is his neighbor. That's how you're supposed to look at life. Everybody in this world is your neighbor. So start looking and treating people with kindness. Because that's what the Samaritan did was an act of kindness. Love is a corresponding action with love, which is kindness. And which is trust. Which is not betraying people and not putting people down. Just because people do something, you don't do it. You don't act the way other people act. You act the way Christ commanded you to act. Love one another. That is your commandment. And that's what he's expecting you to do. That's what he's expecting me to do. We're supposed to love one another. And as long as we do that, we can make a difference. We can make a difference. I like these scriptures here and we close out. It says right here in Jeremiah 31, 3, The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, not to political parties, not to what you have a, a P, P, P with, but with what he said. Trust in all the heart, lean not to an understand in all the ways of knowledge him, you shall direct your path. It is not for you to sit there and think that you can change people based on your attitude. It is for you to sit there and understand that God wants you to love your neighbor. He wants you to love your fellow man. All men are created in the image of God. So therefore, we should love them. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. I'm trying to say you cannot change people with hate and disgust. You cannot sit there and try to say, well, I don't want them to, to cause somebody else to stumble. So therefore, you're going to show rudeness to them. Love them. Meaning, be kind to them. Respect them. Give them the space they need. I'm talking to the body of God. It's because it's, it's bad, I got to sit there and talk to you first. But I guess that's where it starts at, right? Judgment does begin at the house of the Lord, right? So, segment, this is a segment with three. Don't forget to love one another. It's not a suggestion. It's not my suggestion. It's not my commandment. It's Christ. He told us to love one another so that people will know who we are because how we show love to one another. So let's love our brothers and sisters out there, whether they gay or straight, whether they adulterers or not, whether they super saints or baby saints, love them and help them grow, encourage them. When they're in need, do what you can. Same thing with the people out in the street, out in that world, do the best you can. That's all we ask you to do. Don't be phony. We don't ask you to be phony, just be yourself. Treat people with respect. Treat people the way you want to be treated. The golden rule is very clear, right? That's all I have to say. So we'll kind of continue to pick these up. I'll try to make them very short so you can chew on it and think about it until I come back next time. Amen. All right. God bless you. And remember, love your neighbor as yourself. Or as the golden rule says, 
do unto others as you have others do unto you. If you can stick to those rules, I guarantee you when you, uh, when Christ said, what have you done for me when you stand before him? He gonna sit there and say, at least he won't sit there and say, I never knew you. Amen? <laughs> but you go ahead. I'll check you later. God bless. Bye-bye.